Kurt Angle, welcome to uh, my hangout. Oh, awesome to have you here. Um, I got to tell you, uh, a, a, a friends of mine, a couple of years ago when they got married, they came out to the reception to your theme music. <laughs> and my job, I, I, for those who don't follow professional wrestling, my job was to make sure people didn't chant, you suck. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say, I'm yeah. sorry, Zach and Laura, I failed. Absolutely, people chanted, they suck at their wedding. Well, they're going to say it if you play the music, so... <laughs> I'm not holding you responsible. I'm just saying I, I didn't do my two. <laughs> right. How's it going? I'm doing well, thank you. Great, that's awesome. Uh, Rulon Gardner won't die on the Olympic Channel. This documentary um, that you're hosting got a chance to watch it. It's it's phenomenal. And but all I knew about him before watching it was obviously Olympic gold medalist, uh, the snowmobile accident that cost him his toe. But you know, being somebody who, who's who's you know in that world and followed that industry. You know, what is your memory of, of, of Rulon Gardner's time as, as a wrestler? Well, Rulon was a different breed. He was a very big individual. Um, in college, uh, you know, him and I were in college around the same time. So he did extremely well. Never won a national title. He came very close. But his style was so difficult because he was so big and he knew how to use his weight. And not only that, but... He was very intense. He was on top of you the whole time. Probably the best in shape heavyweight I've ever seen in my life. Um, he would wear people down. He would just keep coming. And uh, he, he had that type of intensity. And that, that's what made him special. That's what made him a champion. It wasn't his athletic ability. Um, you know, he was a strong kid. I think that, you know, his size really helped. But the, the way that he was, how intense he was, it was very hard to follow. In other words, he would get guys tired that, you know, these guys were look, looked like they were in better shape than Rulon, but they weren't. And uh, he was very successful with it. Now, I'm going to apologize if I, if I butcher the pronunciation's name. Alexander Carolyn, who we beat for the gold, gold medal. Um, put on a scale of, like, what would you have put the odds going into that, that match that, that Rulon could have pulled off a win? Well, Rulon wrestled him prior, and I believe that, Alexander pretty much annihilated him. Uh, I, I, I don't know what the scores were, but I heard that at one point, I think Corral might have beat him 10 nothing. Wow. So for Rulon to turn that around and beat the guy that was unbeatable, um, that, that has to go down in history for Olympic wrestling as the greatest win of all time. I mean, Alexander Corral was unstoppable, and nobody knew how to figure him out how to beat him. Rulon did it, and he's the only one. The, there are a lot of amazing themes in this piece. Uh, there's, you know, the underdog. There's too much fame too fast. There's, you know, trusting the wrong people. Uh, and one of the interesting ones I saw, they mentioned it twice, is they said an athlete dies two deaths, one when their career ends and one when they literally die. And uh, it seemed like Alexander Carolyn had um, a, a third act planned out as far as like he had other interests and things like that. Whereas it didn't seem like Rulon really did. He just kind of rode the wave. Um, you know, as an elite athlete, how important is it to be prepared for when, you know, the days where you can't compete come around? Well, it's, it's hard. I mean, you, you, you don't want to, you don't want to admit that, you know, your day has come. It's, it's a hard thing to battle with. I mean, Rulon, was fortunate enough to make the Olympics again and medal again. Um, that's phenomenal. Uh, very few people have medaled in two different Olympics, and Rulon's one of those. So I think that, um, you know, what he's been able to accomplish is, is unbelievable. And, you know, knowing Rulon in college, I would have never pitted him as an Olympic gold medalist. Not that he wasn't good enough. It was just that these guys are, are beasts. And, uh, you know, Rulon, Rulon went up against these guys, and he was the underdog, and he was able to overcome. Did, did you and Rulon ever square off in the ring? ring. No, we came close. Uh, Rulon lost a match in the uh, NCAAs, I believe it was the quarterfinals, and the, the guy that beat him, I wrestled in the semis. So I never got a chance to wrestle Rulon. He did take fourth the year, uh, one of the years that I won it. So... He was up there, and uh, he he put on a great performance. Now, what are the now? You are built like a 
masters of the universe action figure, like He-Man. Like you're like not to you know not to toot your horn too much, uh, but Rulo was built like a giant potato. <laughs> Don't tell him where I live. Don't tell him how to find me. No, no. Um, what's the what what? How does that change up your your plan of attack? Someone like just that massive. Well, it, you know th that's the thing. You know, a lot of people think that if someone looks different or they're heavier or they got more around the, the middle part of their body, uh, that they're not in shape, that they can't go. Um, Rulon was able to utilize that, that weight properly. He, he would lean on you uh, to the point that would, you know, eventually it would get you tired. Mm -hmm. And that, that leaning, he was so, uh, I would say, uh, versatile for a big guy that, you know, leaning on guys, you know, if, if you move, you know, the, the big guy will fall. He was, he was athletic enough to be able to uh, uh, use that weight and also be able to keep his feet moving so that he didn't fall off balance and put himself in a bad situation. Rulon ha had the ability to wear down guys and just to keep coming and make them tired. That's why he won. Um, the, as we're talking about third acts, there's a lot of, uh, in the news today about uh, the Undertaker documentary, him trying to find the match he's comfortable in, in, in calling his last match. Uh, you know, as an athlete and also in, in the WWE performer as well, like how important is that to, 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 to put like the perfect cap on, you know, your time out there? Well, for someone like the Undertaker, he's been in the WWE for, geez, 25, 26 years. Uh, he's done so much and accomplished so much. And when you get up there in age, you know, your body starts to break down. Um, you're not exactly the athlete you used to be. But Undertaker has been able to utilize that and continue to keep wrestling and still put on great matches. But he's gotten to the point in his life now where um, he needs to think about who he wrestles. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you had two great wrestlers that, that faced off Goldberg and Undertaker. I think it was in Saudi Arabia last year, and the match failed dramatically. Um, and the reason for that is they're both incredible athletes. They're both great wrestlers, but they're both in their 50s. And, and they're both big guys. And to have Undertaker and Goldberg try to carry each other uh, at, that, at that age, that's and I remember talking to Undertaker in that match. He wasn't, he didn't blame Goldberg. He didn't blame anybody but himself. But I mentioned to him, you might want to pick a smaller guy, Undertaker. Um, you know, at this point in your career, you need a guy that's versatile, that can move and fly around and make the match exciting. And, and you, you know, you, you, you be able to control him and dominate him to a certain point. And I, I mentioned AJ Styles, and ironically, that's who Undertaker faced at WrestleMania. Uh, whether he took my advice or not, I don't know, but um, I knew that AJ would be a great final match for him. And I'm not sure if Undertaker is retired yet. I don't know if he's gonna go again, but if he wanted to retire, he did it with the right person, and him and AJ had an incredible match. Kurt, you can take full credit for, for AJ being on the opposite <laughs> end of that. I think, I think that's all right. And I think there is something to be said for somebody, the Undertaker, who clearly brings so much to the, to the table. And then, you know, somebody smaller, faster. You know, you think of his more recent amazing matches, Shawn Michaels, CM Punk, you know, that line of, of, of talent. So, AJ Styles, like, like I said, I think you should take full credit. I noticed <laughs> you've, you've been uh, showing your face a little on WWE TV. Uh, this past Wednesday, you were a special referee. This Friday, you introduced Matt Riddle for SmackDown. So are you back with the company, or is this on like a per-appearance basis? What, what's going on there? Well, we're in negotiations. I, um, you know, they, they, um, they did the right thing. They, they had to uh, stop the bleeding, and, uh, you know, they were, I was one of the first ones they called. And, um, you know, I, I didn't take it very badly. I, I understood what was going on. And I always knew if, you know, when the time was right, they were going to bring me back. Um, they already have offered me three different jobs. So um, I'm, I'm just taking time to think about if that's what I really want to do. Uh, I love the business. I love the WWE. And, uh, you know, I might be there down the road or maybe even, you know, in the next few weeks. But I do need to think about 
what I'm doing and what I want to do and, and what I want to accomplish. And I also, you know, it's got to be beneficial for me financially. So uh, we'll see what happens, but they have offered me jobs. Uh, one, I think um, it was uh, to manage uh, Matt Riddle. Uh, mm -hmm. The other one was to coach NXT. And the third one was a Legends deal. So um, I will think about it, think very hard, and, and decide in the next few weeks if I want to do that. But I'm very grateful that they did offer me jobs. A job you should definitely think about is wedding bouncer. Uh, <laughs> if anybody heckles the bride and groom, you come in and- How's the pay? Is it any good? <laughs> I'll ask them. I'll, I'll check into it. Um, so last thing, you know, Rulon Gardner won't die. Uh, why should people check out this documentary other than the fact that it is awesome? Okay, you're talking about a, a wrestler that was, was probably looked at as an inferior wrestler, a guy that was never going to make it. And Rulon Gardner has so much heart. He was able to overcome the obstacles and become the best in the whole entire world. And not only that, um, Rulon's been through some difficult times. You know, he had a few near-death experiences. I think a plane crash. Uh, 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 one he was uh, snow. Um, uh, snowmobile. Lost the toe. Um, you know, there was a point where on the biggest loser, I think he was up over 500 pounds. So this guy has, has overcome so many obstacles um, and he has nine lives. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people are going to be intrigued about what they see. He's a very special human being and he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And so when you're watching the documentary, anytime Rulon says, so me and my friends were going to go, it does not end well. It, there's, oh, there's a snowmobile, there's a plane accident, so just know he, sh he should not hang out with those. It's going to be something bad. <laughs> yeah. Kurt, thank you so much for your time. When you get a chance, if you could send me that cardboard cutout and that cowboy hat, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> All right, you got it, my friend. Take right, care. Thanks so much, Kurt. All right. Bye.